Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy, happy Thursday. It is Valentine's Day, so if you celebrate Valentine's Day, I hope you are having a fantastic time with whomever you share your lovely day with. Um, I am getting ready to go and drive to Oregon for tomorrow morning super early um, because um, I'm going to visit some family, as you guys know, stuff going on. So I am going to visit my family for the weekend, so I'm super excited about that. Um, so I wanted to sneak in a video um, before I get on the road. But first and foremost, I have to tell you guys, right now. I want to say thank you so much for the amazing, lovely, fantastic comments on my last video. Thank you for all your support, all your love, all your hugs, all your good thoughts, all of your everything. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. It really made my day. Um, it's been a tough week and all I did, every time a comment would pop up, I would read it. I'm going to do my best to respond to all of you guys. I'm going to take my computer with me and make that part of my weekend. Um, but if I don't get to you, it's not because I'm not trying. I will respond. I just want to say thank you guys collectively. As I always say, you guys are the reason that I do BookTube. I really love books. I love talking about it. But it is the community and sharing my love of books with you that makes this worthwhile. Now, what is this video all about? Most of my book hauls this year, most, both of them, have been books sent to me by publishers. I've just been sort of, I collect them and then I do a haul for you guys. However, that would lead you to believe that I am not buying books myself. And that is not true. I am definitely still very much a book shopper. Um, so I have an entire stack of books here to share with you that I have purchased for myself. And they are all over the place, from new releases to backlist titles to everything. Super excited about all of these. So as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you take care of your TBR, because all of these will either be on your TBR or you've read them or should be on your TBR because they are amazing. Uh, so let's start with the first book, which is my book of the month choice, uh, book club choice for this month. Um, I am still a member of book of the club month, uh, book of the month club, and I absolutely love them. They have such amazing choices. And this month I got the fantastic debut novel, A Woman Is No Man by Ataf Rum, and I apologize, Ataf, if I'm saying your first name wrong. This is a debut novel. Um, Ms. Rum is a, was born in New York City to Palestinian immigrant parents, and this is a story about three generations of Palestinian American women. Um, two locations, really. We have Palestine in 1990, where we have a young girl, her name is Isra, who is a reader. She loves to get lost in books love her already, and really just wants to get lost in that world, but she is forced to sort of get into the game of marriage and finding a husband and one is picked for her, which leads her to move to America. And she has to deal with her mother-in-law and learning marriage expectations and learning a whole entire culture and country. The other sort of time period is 2008 Brooklyn, where we have another young woman, Dea, who is all she wants to do is get into college and her future is bright. Um, however, she is getting pressure from her grandmother. I am assuming that's going to be the mother-in-law from the first section. Uh, the grandmother about meeting a man and meeting a husband. And that is really, according to the blurb says, the only way to secure a worthy future for Day is through marriage to the right man. Um, however, there's going to be a lot of self-discovery, different paths that Daya takes. It's going to lead to question everything she knows about her family. I think that sounds fantastic. This was a debut novel that was totally on my radar and I have wanted to get my hands on it. So excited. A Woman Is No Man by Ataf Rum. This is out from Harper and it is out now so you guys can get a copy. Isn't that a beautiful blue? That's my favorite color, that color blue. The next book has been talked about a bit on BookTube, mainly because of how popular her first novel is. But A Mouthful of Birds is the short story collection from Riverhead Books that just came out this year by Samantha Schweblin. This is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell, who I believe was also the translator for um, her novel, uh, Fever Dreams, which I absolutely, absolutely adored. And these are dark, uh, fairy tale -listic 
short stories. Um, and I'm going to just do something I don't do a whole lot for you guys. I'm actually going to just read you the first paragraph to the first story because I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, Samantha Schwablin is an amazing, amazing writer. So the name of the story is Headlights. It says, when she reaches the road, Felicity understands her fate. He has not waited for her. And as if the past were a tangible thing, she thinks she can still see the weak reddish glow of the car's taillights fading on the horizon. In the flat darkness of the countryside, there is only one, there is only disappointment, a wedding dress and a bathroom she shouldn't have taken so long in. I think that is so good. So that is Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin out from Riverhead Books. You can get your copy and this is just the most beautiful, beautiful edition. And yeah, need to jump into that. Another short story collection. Look at me, two short story collections in a row. And this is a book that came out a while ago, but this is Revenge, 11 Dark Tales by Yoka Agawa. This is translated from the Japanese by Stephen Schneider. I think Stephen Schneider has translated a few of her other novels as well. Um, and I think he's a pretty prolific um, translator. Now, she is so flexible. She wrote um, the professor, the housekeeper and the professor. I can't remember. It's one way or the other. She wrote Hotel Iris, which was also dark and very creepy. And I have heard from a number of people that these 11 tales are fantastic. Um, and I'm super excited. I think this is the only book by her that I didn't own until I got it. And she has a new novel coming out this year. I want to think it's called like The Police State or The Police... The Police Something, I can't remember 100% off my head, but you know I'm a huge fan of Yoka Agawa. Highly recommend. Up here on these shelves are all the writers that I collect because I love, and she is one of them. So this is Revenge, 11 Dark Tales by Yoka Agawa. And if you like something a little scary by a phenomenal writer, highly recommend this. I got this from Picador. Um, and I think it's still available, so you should definitely, definitely get it. It's amazing. Then I went super, super old school, and I went for Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I have been wanting to read Elizabeth Gaskell for some time, but I really don't like any of the editions that I find at the local bookstores. I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, so I've been trying to find the ones I want at used bookstores and just haven't found what I want. But Cranford is right up my alley because this is a humorous account, I love that, of a, of a 19th century English village and a group of women that are not married that are considered spinsters. Everything about that is what I love. You guys know everything about that is what I love. And um, what was the other thing? I, I love it's middle-aged and elderly spinsters. I love that 30-year-old single women at one time were considered spinsters. Um, I just, that is such a conundrum. But I love those books. Barbara Pym, Calling Barbara Pym. Um, I am super, super excited for this book. And I believe that she um, was quite um, championed by Charles Dickens, if I'm not mistaken. So this is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I, I think this will be one I read soon. I think I may take a month this year where I just read books that um, are considered sort of contemporary or and or classics that I've always wanted to get my whole hands on. There's another one in this pile that may fit that. But before we get there, there's this cute, adorable little book right here called An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helene Turn Tur 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 Turston, translated from the Swedish by Marlene Delagree. De and this is stories. And all you need to know about this is this is about an 80-year-old woman with no family, no friends, and doesn't mind committing a murder. What else do you need to know? I started reading the first story of this in the bookstore. It is absolutely hilarious. This is out from Soho Crime Press. Totally, totally adorable. Little tiny book, something you could probably read in a 30-minute sit. But I think it sounds just adorable. And thank you to my friend Lil, who actually recommended this to me on Goodreads. And the minute I saw it in the bookstore, I picked it up. So that's An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helene Terse. Turston, I'm having a problem with that. Translated by Marlene Delargy De and Soho Crime and just adorable. I can't wait. The next book was uh, right next to this book at, I was at Green Apple Books on the Park. You guys, I know I, I love them. I saw uh, Esme 
um, Wei Jin Wing talk about the collected schizophrenias, and I did some shopping. I got this little book. It's called The Governesses by Anne Seurat, and this is translated from the French by Mark Hutchinson. I have read something else translated from the French by Mark Hutchinson. What I love about this book, this is the story of three governor governesses, and it says on the back, are not exactly like Jane Eyre. Prone to Dionysian frenzies, should any passerby fall into the trap of their vast lunar privacy, they pounce upon, seduce, and devour him in a ladylike manner to, state, to sate their ungovernable desires. Everything about that sounds fantastic. I hope someone's read this and will second that this book is great. I love the sound of it. I love everything about it. Um, so that's The Governesses by Anne Seurat. This is out from NDP, which is not a publisher. New Directions paperback. I've read, so I have something else on my shelf from them. I think they do a lot of translated fiction and this was translated by Mark Hutchinson. Super excited. Again, another thin little book, probably take you an hour to read. I was talking to my friend Anne Kingman and talking about the books that she really loved that were coming out. She works for a publisher and she recommended this novel with this gorgeous cover. It's called, and it's hard to get in this light, The Weight of the Piano by Chris Kander. And let's just take a moment. The cover is gorgeous. This is the story told in two parts. It starts in 1962 in the Soviet Union. We have Katya, who is given a piano, a specific piano by her father. Um, that is built in Germany at the turn of the century. Yet after she gets married, she emigrates to the United States and she loses track of the piano. The other part of the story is told in 2012, Bakersfield, California, which is right down the way from me. And we have a young girl named Clara who is 26. Her life is sort of going in a different direction, falling apart a little bit. But all she has left is this piano, which with everything that's going on, she chooses to sell. And it brings these stories together. Um, my friend Anne doesn't recommend back books. So that is The Weight of the Piano. This is out from Knopf by Chris Kander. And I bought this at the bookstore right now so you can get your hands on it. And it is just so beautiful, so beautiful. Okay. The next book I picked up was because of my friend Kendra Winchester. Um, she talked about it on her channel. And um, when I said, oh, that sounds interesting, she said, it's a Russell book. So I got it. I don't know anything about it. But that is The Deeper, The Water, The Uglier, The Fish by Katya Apakina. Let me see if this is, I don't think this is translated. This is by a publisher I don't know much of, $2 Radio, but I love this little book. So this is the story of two sisters, accounts written with sinister humor of two sisters craving the attention of their parents they can't and shouldn't have to themselves. In this captivating debut, um, Katya disquietly crooks the lines between fact and fantasy, between escape and freedom, and between love and obsession. Looks like this is told in sort of like diary format. There's some letters in there. Um, when my friend Kendra tells me, Russell, it's a Russell book, I get it. So that's The Deeper, The Water, The Uglier, The Fish by Katya Apakinya, out from $2 Radio Press, which I don't know, and I'm super excited, and I'm so excited to pick something up by them. I'll have to check out their catalog and start picking up more stuff by them. Um, the next book needs no introduction, and that is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. In my video that I did that you guys all commented on, um, I talked about how I was read going to read a memoir where the author talks about how this book affected her life. To the Lighthouse is a classic Virginia Woolf. It tells the story of the Ramsey family and um, yeah, everything, uh, three novellas, different points of view as they are in their summer house um, on the coast of Scotland. Um, I think this edition I found is beautiful. So I'm super excited about it. So that's To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Not much introduction needed. The last book I'm gonna tell you about in this video is Leading Men by Christopher Castellani, and this is out from Viking Press. And this was, again, another book that was high, high on my radar. And I don't want to know too much about it. I do know that it starts in, I think, 1953. Let me make sure I get that right. In um, Italy, in a party thrown by Truman Capote, where Tennessee Williams is there with his longtime lover, Frank, I think trying to do this off the top of my head guys and they meet a young woman and she changes their lives forever this encounter changes their lives and 10 years later frank is revisiting this the events and from his deathbed and 
everything comes together. I don't want to know anymore. Uh, this is one of those books that has just sort of been on my radar and I've really wanted to read. So that is Leading Men by Christopher Castigliani, and I'm so excited that it's finally out. So that's a nice stack of books that I picked up, picked up for myself, don't you think? I hope all of these books wind up on your TBR, and thank you guys so, so much again for paying, uh, coming along, listening to me talk, and as always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so, so much. If you're new to my channel, um, I hope you like this video and you pick up some video uh, books on it and you come back for more. And as always, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!